Okay, everybody. So if you'll ignore the really ugly background, I can begin. <laughs> I've got my uh, new computer that I built recently. Uh, my online presence has been minimal because this has been taking the bulk of my time, attention, money, etc. You, you get the idea. Um, yeah, I've just been working on a new computer. It was about time I thought, and my old one was just getting a little too slow for video rendering, which I really like to do. I like to make a lot of videos and stuff, but I just don't have the computational power. So I worked on this. Oh, also, you should check out my ghetto mounted light. I have it sitting on my keyboard. Watch out, messy desk. There's my little halogen work light that is absolutely crappy for this job. Actually, it's not too bad from that angle. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, I decided to build another AMD rig. I have nothing against Intel. Actually, I love my Intel laptop. It is beast. And, yeah. Just a heads up for all of these out there who think I'm going to try to bash Intel. I am not. Their prices are just a bit too high for a desktop processor. And honestly, I use the GPU power a lot more than I do the CPU, so I wasn't worried if my CPU was a little under-specced. Um, I, I know I will not saturate the PCIe 2.0 bus, even with two of the card I have. And um, I know my CPU will be more than able to handle it. And what I like is that, uh, put simply, uh, AMD CPUs are what I like to call graceful overclockers. For those of us who are admittedly less overclocking savvy, well, I do know how to do an extreme overclock, I'm not willing to buy the extra hardware to do it. Uh, AMDs don't seem to put off a crazy ton of heat when I do do uh, do do when I do an overclock. Um, I don't know. I find it to be a little more desirable as far as overclocking goes. But Intel's are definitely more powerful right off the bat. Anyway, okay, for some reason the face detection on my camera is picking up the drive bays as a face, but that's keeping good focus, so it's a blessing. Anyway, um, well, why don't I take the panels off of this Cooler Master half XB case and we'll get down to business and defeat the mighty Huns. All right, I'm gonna set the camera down and one second. Okay, so that's about a good, as good an angle as any, so I'm going to start taking off case parts here. And you can see it's under the hood and sides and other areas. My red thumb screws. I kind of like the look of the red on black. I went with a whole red and black color scheme with this build. Although, of course, as usual, Noctua fans have to uh, throw that off a bit. But I actually really like their color scheme, too. A lot of people say they really hate the look of Noctua fans. I'm not sure why. I think they look kind of cool. Oh, they have their own look, and you know what? It's a mark of quality, really. Those fans just... They just keep going. <laughs> I have nothing bad to say about a Noctua product. Although I will say that the NHD14, for as high a price as it is, is still so close to a Hyper 212 Evo in cooling capability that it's not worth the price. Although, those of you who have bought one, I can understand, because I do hear that at higher heats, it actually is a better performer. Apparently, it can keep the heat off longer, although in shorter tests, they have proved to be about the same. Okay, so the top is off, and I'm not sure how much you can see because I can't see my camera right now. Oh, not that much. Side panel one. That's right, I'm making you wait to see the first side panel. You know what? I might even just pop off the front just to make you wait even longer. That's right. I'm a dick. <laughs> Let's see. Pull this off. Oh, oh, nope, nope. Can't slide that off yet. Can I even reach this? Okay, maybe you are going to have to look first. Ta-da! I don't know how much you can see still. How much can you see? Oh, you can kind of see. You can see it looks like a mess. Um, there we go. There. 
pop the front off. And like that, I no longer have case panels. So, picking up my camera, we look at the front here with two 140 millimeter Corsair AF 140s. I guess I really didn't need to say 140 millimeter. Anyway, uh, I have them screwed in on the inside of the case rather than in between the front mesh first so they can get a little airflow before they're impeded by the mesh which is actually quite thick on this. Uh, and second because they actually don't fit. The case says it fits 140s in the front. It really doesn't. It kind of lies there. 140s won't let you put the case cover on, right? I tried it with three different brands. Um, I'm sure there is a brand that does work, probably the Cooler Master brand, I'm not sure. Uh, either way, I didn't want to bother, I didn't need the extra one inch inside because I don't have any cards that are 13.3 inches long. <laughs> I don't know that anybody does that's going to be using this case. Uh, it comes equipped with USB 3.0 ports, audio jacks, reset power switch, and LED for hard drive light. Uh, I put a M-Disc LG CD player in there, mostly because it was cheap, $16.99 in OEM packaging. Um, two removable style drive bays. I kept the little cardboard thing in there so I could put extra case parts in, although those of you who are worried about airflow and stuff underneath could potentially put a hard drive or nothing in there. I didn't really put any hardware that gets all that hot in there. Uh, this, although I'm not going to remove it all the way because it is attached with cables inside, uh, is a one terabyte Seagate drive. I'm going to spin my case a little bit here. Um, you can see here hiding is the MSI Radeon 7950. Opted for the 7950 because when overclocked, it performs quite close to the 7970 at a $100 price drop. Um, it, it's so far, it's been a great performer. Have had no issues with AMD's drivers for those of you who complain about them. I am a longtime NVIDIA user and I was really wary before I bought this, but you know what? I thought I'm only going to have the money to really take this chance right now. I won't have it for a couple of years going off to college, so you know what? Might as well take the chance. I can earn the money over the summer to buy a better card if this one ends up sucking. And you know what? It doesn't suck. It's pretty damn awesome. Actually looking forward to crossfire the to crossfiring these because I've heard that some of the uh, micro stutter has been reduced with the latest drivers, so you know what? I'll give it a shot. Uh, as you can see there, I've got the I've got four SATA cables. You saw two of the drives in front. You'll see two more right here. I have a Samsung 840 Pro SSD right here. It is a 128 gig model. Yes, I know it does not reach the top speed of the 256 and 512. However, I bought a 256 version for my laptop and because it's the only drive in that, I figured the high capacity was necessary, but I have two other drives in this, so I really only wanted my OS and my really important applications to go on there. I have a 500 gig uh, Seagate drive right here. And I just store uh, some random crap on there. I don't really have any problem. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, my camera was starting to bug out there, and I just wanted to catch it before it became bad. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to rotate it right around to the back yet. Instead, I'll rotate to the other side. Oh, I didn't mention, uh, this is, this MSI card is a Twin Frozer 3 cooling option model. Uh, I figured because of the size of this case, uh, I, although it does leave actually quite enough room now that I actually got it, I, I originally planned for not doing uh, water cooling. I think now I will probably do water cooling. Uh, when I get the money again, but this does have the Twin Frozer 3 cooling option, which is very quiet up until the fans get to about 53%, but let me say that unless you're running Crisis 3 at, I don't know, some dual or tri-monitor resolution, you're probably not going to have an issue. Even Quad HD it did okay with uh, as far as heat. It didn't really ever reach that high. 
and it performs very well. Uh, and over here you can see the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. Yes, I know, the fans strapped to it cost more than the cooler itself. Don't tell me I'm aware. But I gotta say, after, uh, after making this specific choice, it performs damn well. <laughs> uh, in the back I have an old favorite, a thermal take. Uh, I think it's a... oh boy, I cannot remember the name of it. It's an older Thermal Take fan. Uh, it's one of their earlier Quiet series from around 2008, I think. Either way, they're very good performers. They don't cost a whole lot, or they didn't back then. They only cost like 11 bucks. And I actually think it's pretty darn close to the silentness that these... Uh, Noxua brand fans are attaining. Although the Noxuas do force more air, that's why I'm using this as purely just an exhaust fan. Nothing special there. Uh, when I ordered them from Frozen CPU, I had the cable sleeving put on because it was cheaper than buying a whole bunch of sleeving and doing it myself when I have no plans to sleeve anything else. And I had them sleeved in red. Mm, my motherboard happens to have two headers for fans, if you are going to be using fans for your CPU cooler, you can hook up two at once. Uh, I ended up using Corsair Vengeance RAM. It's kind of showy. It's for the I, I would I, r I rank the Corsair Vengeance series as hey look we strapped heat sinks to uh, to RAM modules that really don't need it so that the kids who are building their first system would glom onto it. Uh, I didn't fall for it. I kind of just got what I could at the time. I didn't have a crazy lot of money while I was still building this. I, w I was running out of money when I bought this. I originally wanted to go with the Dominator series, and even then, eh. I just knew I did not want to go with G-Skill this time. Um, I've gone with it three times before. I didn't want to play it safe anymore. Yes, they make great RAM. No, I did not buy it because I wanted to keep trying new brands like I usually do when I build a new computer. Yes, I, uh, I should probably build for stability's sake, but you know what? I want to say as much good stuff about good hardware as I can. And if I don't try new hardware, how can I ever do that? So, so far, this Vengeance RAM has been pretty good. Uh, it's nothing special. Definitely nothing special. Actually, it doesn't kind of overclocks poorly, but enough about that. Uh, here, this is the... Sabertooth 990FX R2.0. I didn't bother with PCIe 3.0 because not that big of an improvement. And for the price, which is going to be another 80 bucks on this board's price, which was 189 as it was, um, it wasn't worth it to me because even with two Radeon 7950s, I cannot saturate the PCIe bus. Uh, you can see the fanciness of the 212. I actually really like the design, and so far the Noctua fans strapped onto it have really helped. I bought a Corsair, never used one of their power supplies before, a Corsair AX850 power supply, fully modular. As you can see, I've taken advantage of the modular capabilities. And uh, so far, it has performed great as well. If anything, I would say it runs a little hot, even when I'm not... Even when I'm just like web browsing stuff, I would say it runs a little hot, but it probably feels like that because the fan doesn't kick in until you hit about 300 watts worth of usage. So overall, the silent option built into the into the system is, um, I would say it's probably going to end its life early. But it's been putting out very clean power, constant results, had no issues overclocking with it on there. So I'm not going to say anything really bad about it yet because it's it's doing its job as it's supposed to, it just runs kind of hot. Um, luckily it comes with a, oh, what was it? So it's either five year or lifetime warranty, and I can't remember for the life of me, but as soon as that warranty runs out, if I haven't had to have had it replaced by then, I will hardwire the fan on, because, well, at that point I would want it to last as long as possible, and I think allowing the fan to be on 24-7 as long as the computer's on seems smart.
Again, I stated that I went with the stylistic option to use red thumb screws. They're aluminum by Rhino Tech. They're pretty good uh, thumb screws. They're made out of aluminum, so they're not going to be as strong as the steel screws that come with it. All I would say is be careful not to cross thread them and don't screw them in too tightly. Uh, I haven't stripped one yet, so yeah, I would say they're just fine. Overall, I really like the intake fans. When Corsair makes their fans, I noticed that the 120 millimeter size at full speed pushed 35 CFM roughly. These push 67 CFM, so for the small size increase, it was definitely worth it. Uh, airflow inside this case is absolutely great. As you can see, it's a simple front to back design, and everything stays cool. So, I'll show you some benchmarks and stuff maybe later. Right now, I'm just going to plug it back in and put this video on. I'll edit it all up on here, and yeah, I will be back and active on YouTube for a little while. I actually posted a video recently, but it's unlisted. If you can guess the URL, you're a pro. Okay, see you later, guys. Okay, I'm going to put my little mini tripod on so I can set this down in case. Okay, that's going to be a blooper.